Hello everyone, we are talking brushes today. I am going to walk you through all the brushes that I use on a regular basis to get a full face of makeup. Let's go. We're talking brushes today. I'm just gonna walk you through like my base makeup routine, but the focus will be on the brushes that I'm using. Now I'm always one to just say, do what you like, use what you want. There's no rules when it comes to makeup, that kind of thing, but Sometimes we need a recipe to follow. I'm a terrible cook and if someone were just to tell me measure with your heart or add the spices that you like, it's going in the trash, I'm scrapping it, like I need a recipe. So here I am today giving you your brush <laughs> recipe. This is your guide. I'm telling you the exact specific brushes that I specifically use for each step of my makeup routine. First is color corrector and I actually already put my color corrector on, but let me show you real quick what I use. I like to use this really small pencil shaped brush. Everything will be linked in the description box with discount codes and listed and linked. <laughs> First is, this is the E30, E30 pencil brush from Sigma and I like to use it for my color corrector right here um, to really target only the dark spots. I don't want to put color corrector all underneath, so I use this brush and really just press it on to just the dark circles that I have, and then I'll use my finger to tap and blend it out. So the E30 pencil brush. I have been doing my complexion makeup a little bit differently in the summertime because I want to wear a little less makeup and have it be a little more natural, a little more skin-like finish. And so I've been starting with my bronzer, actually. And so I've actually been starting with my bronzer first. I do kind of like an underpainting, single layer makeup vibe. And so when I do that, I like to use this brush to apply my bronzer. This is an F82. I use Senegin's Tinted Moisturizer for my whole complexion. This is the tinted moisturizer in the shade medium deep. And I'm just going to press it on the areas that I like to have my bronzer. And I'm using this foundation brush to apply it because I want to get as much coverage out of this product as I can. Since I don't have a base of tinted moisturizer underneath, I want to make sure that this is giving me the coverage and the bronze. I like doing bronzer first for a few reasons. Like I said, if I'm wanting just that single layer makeup, if I don't want a ton of coverage, I want a really skin-like finish, I will do this. But also if you're someone who struggles to apply your bronzer in general and you feel like it ends up getting all over or it looks messy, it's a great way to apply bronzer and then you can kind of correct it when you put your regular foundation or tinted moisturizer on afterwards. So this is the... F82 brush. Then I go in with tinted moisturizer. And for tinted moisturizer, I always use these two brushes. I use a flat brush. Sometimes I'll use my finger, but I don't like to get my fingers dirty, so a flat brush will do. And then I use this to like spread it and apply it. And then I will use a flat top. This is the F80 from Sigma Flat Top Kabuki brush. It's kind of dense and flat. And I'll use this to stipple the product in. So let me show you. This is the shade light and I dip my flat brush in it. And then I'm just kind of carving out my bronzer. I don't want it to go too far down on my cheek. So I keep it high. And then I'm just spreading it wherever I didn't put bronzer basically. And this brush does not fully blend it in. This brush is just kind of spreading it over the areas. And then I like to let it start to dry down a little bit before I go in and blend it. Now I said that this is the way that I've been doing my tinted moisturizer for the summertime, but if I want more coverage or I want just like a more fully even complexion, if I want a more full coverage, finish, not full, but if I just want more coverage, if I want a more even complexion, that kind of just like perfected look and then bronzer on top, I'll start with tinted moisturizer, but I still apply it that same way. I still spread it all over with a flat brush, let it start to dry down, and then go in and stipple it into my skin with this F80 brush, and then I'll do bronzer on top. So here's the stippling. Press it into your skin to get more coverage, if you swirl it like, like this, it'll give you less coverage, which I don't love, but it'll, it'll also tug at the skin and not give as even of a coverage. So I always like to press it 
like this. And this is just awesome because it's putting that tinted moisturizer in the areas that did not get it from the bronzer. I end up using less tinted moisturizer because I don't have to cover my whole face and it also cleans up the bronzer. Now, bronzer over top of tinted moisturizer. So if I don't do that like single layer underpainting style, if I wanna go in and just blank canvas my face with tinted moisturizer and then top it off with bronzer, I like to use this brush. It's different than the previous one. This one has more density to it, so it's going to maintain the coverage, whereas this one is a little bit fluffier, so it kind of will shear the product out a little bit more. Let me just show you, for the sake of showing you, we'll be super bronzed up today. <laughs> so when I'm using this brush, I like to actually use a darker tinted moisturizer. This is the shade Deep, but I only do just a little bit. Really work it into my brush. And you can see the flexibility of the brush. Just a general rule of thumb, the more flexible a brush is, the more like wispy and bendable it is, the less coverage it's gonna provide. The denser the brush, the more pigment and the more coverage. The looser brushes are great for blending and shearing out. Super great for blending. So then I still will kind of press it on but it's not, since it's not dense, it's not providing like intense coverage. It's a little more sheer. And then I can also kind of sweep it and just give myself a little bit more of a bronze. Either way, these two are what I use for tinted moisturizer, and then I use one or the other of these for bronzer, or sometimes both if I want a little extra. Moving on, I have a whole concealer video. I have a whole lots of videos actually talking about makeup. So I'm just gonna breeze through the application of this, but I like to apply my concealer with my fingers first. I just apply it and then let it sit and start to dry down before I blend it. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then I'll show you what brush I use to blend it. Blending concealer, I love this brush. This is the F64. It's just nice and small. The perfect mix of fluffy and dense. Dense to maintain the coverage, but fluffy to blend it out. And I just press it. You'll notice I don't sweep my brush very often. That just will tug at the skin and I wanna avoid that. And pressing motions, again, is going to keep the coverage and the most true to pigment. Blush. My go-to blush brush, I have probably one, two, three, I have three of these just sitting right here that I can see. Probably more over there. Anyway, love this brush. I also used to use this brush for bronzer. I like the other two that I show better, but if you're in a pinch or you maybe can't grab a ton, this one I feel like has a little bit more versatility. Blend out my blush on my hand and then I dip my brush into it and really work the product into the bristles of the brush. And you can see that flexibility there, that, that um, fluffiness, so that's gonna be great for blending, but it's still small enough that it's not gonna blow out the product on my whole face. And then I just press it in. Wherever you put your brush down first, that's gonna be where the most pigment is. So for blush, I like to start a little farther back and then at the end, I'll kind of sweep it over my whole face to give more of that like sun-kissed look. Alrighty, let's move on to brows. For brows, I love using this teeny tiny, can you even see it? Teeny tiny, this is an E06 angled liner brush, winged liner brush. It's actually, it's meant to be an eyeliner brush, but I love it because it's got those teeny tiny bristles. I like to pinch them together to make them really tight. And then this works really well to add hair strokes to the brow. So I can go in and I've already set my brows in place with the brow gel that I like. And so this is just to add some extra hair strokes to fill in the holes. Now, if you don't have the time or the patience, if you don't have the time or the patience to do hair strokes, or maybe you don't have a ton of hair and you need like a little bit quicker of a fill, this E75 is also really great. It's bigger, you can see it's bigger, but it's still pretty thin. 
this way, thin and tight, so it's it doesn't like put too much product on your eyebrows. So sometimes I will use this one when I'm in a hurry, especially on this front part of my brow where I just wanna create this like strong line and that's kind of all I'm looking for. This one isn't as floppy as this small angled one. This small angled one can be a little bit floppy, which is nice for the hair strokes, but when I'm working on this front section, sometimes I want like a little more stiffness. So I like both of them. I think they're both great. If I had to pick one, it would be the smaller one because of the versatility. I use this a lot for my eyeliner as well. And I actually use the same color, so it's kind of nice. I don't have to clean it off. I will say, I do like having the two options because I just like this one better for the front of my brow and the smaller one better for the tail. Shadows. Ooh wee. There are a lot of brushes that you can use for shadows. I'm gonna show you the basics that you should have in your collection. Okay, there's six basics that you should have in your collection and I am going to walk you through them all and I'll show them all, okay? So this first one is a big fluffy one. This one is great for applying color all over, not needing to be too particular about placement, nice and sweeping motions, nice and great at blending. And you can see, even though I'm sweeping on my skin, it's not really tugging my eye skin too much because this just glides right over. You do wanna be careful with this type of brush though because it is a bigger brush, it can tend to blow product out. And so you wanna make sure that you're using it with a shade that is similar to your skin tone and just kind of your intent with it is to put it all over and blend. This type of brush is not going to work as well with like a darker color or a shimmer lid color. This is like strictly for transition area and all over color. Now, for outer corner, I like to have two brushes on hand. I like a smaller one for precise placement of a darker color, and then I like a little bit more of a fluffier one to blend. A lot of times though, I actually just use this small one and then use my finger to kind of blend it out. Let me show you. I feel like when in doubt with eyeshadow, use a smaller brush. A big problem that people have, they think is with their blending, but in reality, their brush is just too big so it's blowing the product out everywhere. This is actually that same pencil brush that I used as my color corrector. So I'm just pressing it exactly where I want it to go and then using my finger and the warmth of my finger to blur those edges. Now I can get that same type of blend with this smaller brush. This is an E27. More often than not, I just like to use my finger. By the way, this was an E35 blending all over E30 for the outer corner. Now that doesn't mean that there's no place for this brush though. I actually really like this brush for lid color as well. So I'll use it under the eyes, sometimes in the outer corner. It's also a great lid color brush. So this is a really versatile brush. It also has some flexibility to it. So it could even be used up here to blend color all over. So like, this is a very versatile brush. Um, this is the E27. Now when it comes to lid color, you've got a brush like this that's a little bit fluffier. It's small enough that you can put it on your lid and it's not gonna blow color out everywhere. But the fluffier the brush, the more sheer the color is going to be. The more dense the brush, the more intense and pigmented the color will be. So these are kind of my two go-to brushes for lid color, depending on the finish that I want. If I want it softer, more subtle, more blended, I will use this fluffier brush. If I want it more impactful, more pigmented, more true to color, I will use the dense brush. You could also use your finger for that density and that impact, but I find that I have better control with the brush. Let me show you real quick. So for the fluffier brush, I'm just gonna pick it up onto the brush, starting on the center, because that's where the most pigment is gonna be. I place that first and then work my way inwards and then just kind of blend it all together. So that's what that looks like. 
I like the way that that looks. Let me show you on the back of my hand though, the comparison. Oh, this is the wrong color to try to show you with. Can you even see? That is blended with a fluffy brush, so you can barely see the shine. Whereas this one is pressed on with the dense brush so you can see that metallic finish a little bit more. Now for eyeliner, I'm going to take it back to the brush that I used for my brows, the E06. And I love using this as an eyeliner brush. A lot of people's issue with eyeliner comes down to the brush that they're using. And it often is the case where the brush that they use is just too big. And so they feel like they have no control. It gets everywhere. They can't do it. You can. You just have to have the right tools. So this is great for drawing on a winged liner. If I want to smoke it out a little bit, I will go back in with that brush that I use for the darker outer corner color. And because it's small enough, I can kind of use it to smoke out that color. All right, and then last up for the eyes, I like having this brush. This is an E31, a domed brush. It's, it is very similar to this one, but it's not pointed on the tip. It's domed and rounded. And I love this for my inner corner. This is very particular. You could, there's quite a few brushes that you could use, but I just really love this because I feel like it just gets in there perfectly. It blends well without blowing out the color too much. It keeps the color like true to pigment and it just fits in there perfectly. Like I showed before, there's a lot of brushes that can kind of have like a fairly good crossover. You could use this on the outer corner, things like that. However, I do like to have a specific brush for a specific technique. That way I don't have to be cleaning my brushes as often either. Let's do under eye powder. When I'm powdering my under eye area, right before I do it, I like to take my brush and roll the end. And this is just gonna pick up any excess product, which will help reduce creasing. And then for application of powder, I like to use these little puffs and dip it in my powder, work it into my puff on the back of my hand, and then press it in. And I will do this on any of the areas that I get really oily or that I have larger pores. So that is my translucent powder. It's the white one, so it has a bit of a brightening effect. And then I go in with my bronzing powder. And this is my favorite brush for a powder bronzer. This is the F40. And I'll just go over my bronzer and this helps to melt the bronzer and the blush together and then just kind of smooths everything out okay I think that's it for brushes I'm gonna throw on my mascara and my lip color and that's it <laughs> lash curler love 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 this lash curler I have used it for years and it just there's something about it that just works so well And then lash comb, if you need a lash comb, these little brush picks are the best. They're nice and tiny and they work really great for getting the clumps out. Okay, so there you have it. Those are all my favorite brushes to use. Hopefully this was helpful. Check the description box, everything will be linked and if I have a discount code, I will list it there. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Bye.